Alright guys, welcome back to another video, and today I'm excited to finally be talking about my full review of the Oculus Quest 3. I've had it in my hands for about a week now, and putting it through its paces, I've been doing a lot of gameplay and videos for you guys, so if you guys have not checked out those videos, check them out. I have top 10 list on my favorite uh, games that I think you should experience on the Quest 2 that take advantage of the hardware, uh, top, 10, uh, top 12 mixed reality games, a bunch of different stuff, and a lot more stuff to come as the season goes on. There's a lot of games coming out between the months of October and November and December, so there's a lot of good stuff to look forward to and good reviews to make on this product. But today we're here to talk about an overview of the actual hardware itself and my full review on everything I've experienced so far, especially compared to the Oculus Quest 2. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech, going for a brekkie is the gaming tech, gaming tech is the gaming tech, gaming tech is so let's go ahead and start off with the hardware itself, which is of course right next to me right here. So on the hardware size of this thing, this thing actually weighs a little bit heavier than the Oculus Quest 2, but because of the form factor and because of the way this thing is actually designed and how much thinner it actually is, which is 40% thinner if you don't take into account the facial interface, it actually feels lighter on your head, even though it's actually a little bit heavier. So the ergonomics of it are actually a lot better than the Quest 2 and it fits on my head really well. And you know, it's a lot better of a design headset because of it. And this thing also comes in two storage sizes. It comes with 128 gigabyte for $499 and a 512 gigabyte for $649. Now the one I have is the 512 gigabyte. There's no way I can go back to 128 gigabyte. I used to have the 256 on the Quest 2 and there's no way that I can go back and forth between the two of those and not actually have, you know, the bigger storage size. Games are getting bigger by the day. We have Asgard's Wrath that is gonna be like 25 gigabytes, uh, you know, coming out. Games are getting updated to have higher resolution textures and stuff like that, uh, which are doubling in size in some cases for the games. There's no way I can go back. And in my opinion, I've done a video uh, letting you guys know what I think about those two comparisons, but in my opinion, I think a lot of people are gonna want the 512, even though obviously the increase in price is kind of crazy. Uh, but that's where they're making their money, but there's just no way I can get 128 gigabyte as somebody who has as large of a library as I do. And then of course we got to talk about the actual strap of this thing. Now you can see I already removed the strap but the elite, with the Elite strap that I have here. And the Elite strap is, uh, makes the headset really comfortable. Now with the original strap that this thing came with, originally I thought it was fine. After like an hour, I started feeling a lot of pressure on my ears and my ears started hurting because it kind of sits on your ears or goes over your ears depending on the shape of your head. It wasn't good at that point. Uh, so the original strap that it comes with, though better than the original, I would say, uh, because the original was uncomfortable for me in like literally two minutes and I wanted to rip it off. This one I can last a little bit over an hour before it starts hitting my, my ears and stuff like that and hurting my head. So it's definitely an improvement of the original strap design, but regardless, immediately needs to be replaced with either an Elite strap or a Bobo VR strap, whatever kind of third-party strap you want. Uh, but at least it's an improvement, but it's still not comfortable out of the box for most people after an hour of use. Now let's talk about the displays of this thing. This thing has a higher resolution than the Quest 2 and even a higher resolution than the Quest Pro as well, which I have back there. Uh, so you're gonna definitely see that as soon as you get in with the clarity and stuff like that when you're reading text and all that stuff, you'll immediately notice high resolution in games and text and all that stuff. But more importantly than just resolution are the lenses in this thing as well, which these are now pancake lenses and these things are probably the best lenses I've used so far on any VR headset. Uh, they're super clear. They're even a little bit better than what comes on the Quest Pro, but they're kind of in that same vein. But pancake lenses, for those of you guys who are coming from a Quest 2, is literally going to blow your mind as far as clarity goes. Uh, they're so clear. The sweet spot on these things are so much bigger, and they look fantastic. And it's going to make every game you know, kind of look new in a sense because of how much clearer everything looks and how much clarity there is. And putting on the headset now is so much easier because the sweet spot is so large. I literally just put my headset on. I'm already in my sweet spot. You're not finagling it around or looking for anything because everything is already in its place and you're kind of ready to go. So the pancake lenses, in my opinion, make a huge, huge difference coming over from the Quest 2 and even a little bit of a difference compared to the Quest Pro uh, because they're a little bit better.
better than even those pancake lenses that they had on the Quest Pro. Now, of course, these are LCD panels, so of course you're not going to be getting like the clearest blacks or anything like that. Uh, the Quest Pro still has that kind of beat with its local dimming support, and the blacks are going to be better on there because it's using a form of mini LED. And the Quest 2 is using LCD as well, so it's going to be around that. The contrast and colors might be a little bit better on the Quest 3 than it was on the Quest 2, but it's still around that same vein as far as it being LCD technology, so you're still not going to have true blacks or anything. It's going to look a little grayish like we're all kind of used to with LCD. Uh, obviously, we all want an OLED on here. A lot of people want OLEDs, but that's going to obviously increase the price by a lot. But I can't wait till the day that we have an OLED panel or a mini LED like they did on the Quest Pro and the Quest mainline products on here. And with the displays that you have on here, there's no more God rays or, or, or and stuff like that that you see on the Quest 2 when there's white text on a white on a black background and you see like those shining God rays and rays coming at you. None of that with these pancake lenses. It's all gone. It's all fantastic. I can't see any screen door effect on this as well. Uh, the panels and, and the gameplay and stuff like that is just fantastic on this. Like I said, in my opinion, these are the best lenses and the best optics that I've used uh, on a headset so far. It looks fantastic, uh, even better than it was on the Quest Pro. And I can't wait to, you know, experience more and more games on these things because I think if you're coming from a Quest 2, the display and everything on here and the lenses are going to kind of blow your mind, in my opinion, as far as how much better everything is and how much clearer everything is. Um, but on top of that, they're just the best lenses I've used. I used a lot of VR headsets, Vive Pro 2, the Vive, the original Vive, uh, the Valve Index, Quest 2, Quest Pro, PSVR 1, PSVR 2, all that kind of stuff. The only thing I haven't used yet, which I have coming hopefully at the end of this month or the beginning of next month, is the big screen beyond, which I can't wait to see that. That's going to be my PC VR headset, uh, where well, this becomes my standalone headset. Um, but this thing is fantastic so far from anything I've tried as far as lenses and display go. Moving on to the field of view, this is also an improvement over to the Quest 2. Uh, the field of view on here is definitely much, uh, is definitely a 10% improvement for me. Uh, it's about 108 degrees that I'm getting horizontal, and I'm even getting a little bit more field of view on the vertical side as well. I don't know exactly what the numbers are, I didn't measure the vertical, uh, but it's definitely at least a couple of degrees more because when I look up on the Quest 2 and I went back and forth, I, I can see a little bit more from the vertical side and the horizontal 108 degrees that I'm getting is definitely noticeable with the quest 2 I felt like I was wearing sea goggles when I was putting that on like a lot of people referred to it with the quest 3 here it seems like I'm wearing more of a uh, you know a visor where things are a little bit more squared off uh, where I can see a little bit more on every side so it doesn't feel like a ski goggle effect it feels like more of a visor kind of effect which definitely feels better for immersion now when it comes to the for people who wear glasses and stuff like that uh, I've talked about this in a lot of videos in my opinion you need to get uh, the uh, inserts on here prescription inserts I got the Zenny inserts and I've talked about this in another video with the accessory review but they're fantastic I've had no issues with them and I think for 50 bucks they're well worth it you're gonna have the quest 3 for a long time not having to wear glasses or contacts or anything in VR is a fantastic experience. But if you don't want to do that for some reason or you just want to know if glasses work on here, they do work. All the um, the uh, facial interfaces that they have on here, they have like three, uh, four different levels of how far you can separate it, the glasses that can go in there. And, you know, you can adjust the size of that anywhere you want. And you can definitely get glasses in here. I can fit my glasses in here without a problem. I just feel like, obviously, when you're in VR, you know you're wearing glasses. Even though they're comfortable, they're in there. Just like right now, I know I'm wearing glasses. And I just think it's a much better experience in VR to just be able to have inserts in there with prescription. And just be like, damn, this is what it feels like to, you know, not have to wear glasses or contacts. Like, half the rest of the world can kind of see without anything. So, I just think it's a much better experience. And I got those immediately on my Quest. But... It does work with glasses if you want to do that. When it comes to the controllers, obviously you can tell the biggest difference is that there is no ring. As you can see here with the Quest 2, this is the ring controller. And as you can see, there is no ring on these anymore. And the ergonomics are a little bit tilted. They're kind of like the Quest Pro controllers where it's a little bit like uh, tilted downwards and stuff where your where your thumb rests and stuff like that, uh, which is a little bit different than this one. But other than that, they kind of feel you know pretty much similar without the ring as you're holding onto it. This does have a little bit better haptics. The haptics are not as good as they were on the uh, Quest Pro, but they're definitely better than what the Quest 2 are. And the tracking on here is either just as good or better than what the Quest 2 was. Uh, the tracking has always been great for me. I've never really had any issues. Uh, I tested the tracking and stuff like that. You can put it behind your back for a second, around your uh, around your shoulders and everything, and everything works. The only time you can make this thing lose tracking is, of course, if you put it behind your back and you just leave it there for like 10 seconds, of course, it's going to lose tracking at that point. And, but then when you bring it back, it goes right back into focus uh, pretty immediately. But 
uh, either way, uh, it's kind of what you would expect from a Quest 2 or better as far as the tracking goes. And it's been fantastic. I haven't had any issues with mine. Playing a variety of games, playing Expert on Beat Saber, all that stuff works on here without any problems at all. And uh, it's definitely an improvement over the Quest 2 with the uh, no rings, in my opinion, now having it easier to grip and stuff like that. Uh, with the better haptics and stuff like that that are in here, that's an improvement over the Quest 2 controllers. Uh, all around, they're better controllers and better tracking than what it was on the Quest 2. They also do still use batteries for those of you guys who want to know. They are they do use batteries and they do last as long as what you expect on the Quest 2 uh, when you're using these controllers. The batteries seem to last forever on this thing. The next thing I want to talk about here is obviously a big thing that's new on the Quest 3 and that is the pass-through and mixed reality stuff. So the pass-through camera, as you can see here on the Quest, there is a depth sensor right here and then two uh, four megapixel cameras that are sitting right here on either side and that's what they use for pass-through. So with these four megapixel cameras, you do get color pass-through through now big difference on the quest 2 being black and white and the resolution is definitely higher than it was on the quest 2 so pass through definitely looks much better now is it still grainy yes absolutely it's still grainy but when you're playing mixed reality experience and stuff like that uh the graininess is not something you notice because you're you're just experiencing the game world and unless if you're looking for the graininess at least in my room and remember it definitely pertains to light. The better your lighting in the room, the better pass-through is going to look. It's never going to look crystal clear. That's not what four megapixel cameras are going to be able to do, but it's going to look substantially better than what the Quest 2 does, and it's going to look a little bit better, even more so, on the Quest Pro as well, as I have both of them. So I think the Quest, and obviously you can read stuff now in pass-through as well, where you can read your phone. Uh, I can read my monitor and stuff like that. I can read my display back here. So it's definitely much improved, and it's definitely a lot more usable now. Now when I'm recording a video, I can use my PC to stop the recording and stuff like that and manipulate settings and go on the browser if I need to look something up without having to take the headset off. And it makes for a much better experience. And then when I'm playing mixed reality experiences, uh, you know, things look a lot better in there. And it definitely fools your brain into thinking that there's things in your room that are happening. So I think it's a lot of fun. And obviously, it can only go up from here. We know the Quest 2 got a ton of updates to improve things. So I would expect the pass through to get even better as time goes on. But I just wouldn't expect when you go in here to, to see perfect clarity and stuff like that. I think that's something that we'll probably get a lot closer to when the Apple Vision Pro comes out based on the early impressions from there. And I can't wait to get my hands on an Apple Vision Pro and kind of compare it to the Quest 3. But I think this pass-through is really good for what it is at a $500 device. And it's definitely usable and it definitely is a much bigger improvement by 10 times probably than the Quest 2 and even a couple times better than it is on the Quest Pro. Now, when it comes to actual game improvements on here, of course, it's a huge improvement. We're talking about this thing having a next-gen XR2 chip in here. Uh, so it's 2.5 times is about what they're saying, as powerful as the Quest 2 and the Quest Pro. Um, so you're going to get games that are, you know, obviously much, much better. And obviously things are still getting updated. So things are a little bit fresh right now uh, with things still coming out. There's obviously not dev devs specifically targeting the Quest 3 yet. They're just improving their current games. Obviously, there's no games out there that are currently specifically made for the Quest 3 where it's an exclusive or stuff like that. You're probably not going to see that till at least next year. But... Some of the games that have come out have still been really, really impressive. Things like Red Matter 2 are light years better than what it looks like on the Quest 2 and looks really close to PCVR quality. The devs over there are doing fantastic work. Dungeons of Eternity has improved uh, with better lighting, better textures and stuff like that. I've done a full video comparing all the different games and how much better these games have looked on the Quest 3. But the moral of the story is, is that if you're playing a game on the Quest 2, yes, you're going to be playing the same games on the Quest 3 for the time being because there's no true exclusives. But... They're going to be substantially better looking with a better resolution, the pancake lenses that we talked about, and just the overall horsepower that these games are going to be able to have now with better lighting, better textures. Uh, some of these games look outstanding. Like I said, I, I dropped into... Uh, I dropped into a bunch of different games now, and they, the games that have been updated, like Population 1 also now getting 90 FPS, having better textures, you can see longer in the distance and stuff. Everything just looks so much better, and it's going to be something you notice if you play these games on the Quest 2 and you play a game that's been updated for the Quest 3, you're going to immediately notice how much better it is. It's kind of like I said uh, in the, my previous videos, it's kind of like getting low-end PC VR graphics when these games are updated which is obviously a fantastic experience and it looks so so good and things can really only go up from here stay tuned to this channel as i talk about new games when they come out on how much better they look like on the quest 3 and watch my video that i've done already with the comparisons of what the games look like before and what they look like now for the games that have already been updated the future definitely looks bright as far as how much better the graphics are going to look like on here and i think a lot less complaints are going to happen as far as people being like oh these are just mobile graphics and they don't look that good and they look like psvr graphic or ps1 graphics i think 
the best comparison I can give right now is that the graphics are now basically PS3, Xbox 360 era, which is a much bigger improvement than where they were before. The next thing I want to talk about is the movie watching experience on this thing. The movie watching experience on this is fantastic, obviously. I love 3D movies, you guys know that. I love watching 3D movies in VR, and the fact that this headset has better sounds, so you got the speakers on here that are 40% louder uh, than the, what the speakers were on the Quest 2, and they sound a little bit better than what they did on the Quest 2 as well as far as clarity. So that's going to improve the movie experience. You got all the display stuff that I already talked about in this video, which is going to make a movie experience of watching, you know, big screen uh, movies and stuff like that or watching your own movies on here just that much better. When you're watching a, you know, 4K movie, you can see the clarity on there. You can see the big improvement that it is from the Quest 2. There's no, uh, you know, screen door effect. There's no God rays and stuff like that on here. Um, it, it's just a fantastic movie watching experience now is it true 4k is it going to look as good as if you had an oled in front of you uh you know watching at a 65 inch uh, oled screen in 4k no it's not going to be that good again that may be something that we get a lot closer to with the apple vision pro with the displays that that thing has but on here you're getting somewhere between 1080p and 4k as far as the display which is amazing for where it was before and watching 3d content on here like i've always said 3d content was made for vr and it really really does add you know a lot to the 3d experience with the with the panel that's on here with the you know much better lenses the pancake lenses the, the higher resolution all of that combined with the better sound is going to give you a much better movie experience if you're into watching movies than it did on the quest 2. so the next thing we're going to talk about is a little bit about the pc vr experience now i'll be honest with you guys i usually don't use my quest 3 as a pc vr headset because i usually have headsets for particular reasons got my playstation vr 2 i use that for playstation vr i got my quest 2 and quest 3 and i use that for um you know standalone vr and then I usually have a VR headset specifically for a PC. Now I had an HTC Vive Pro 2 for a while. I sold that off uh, last month because I knew I was getting a big screen beyond. So big screen beyond will always be my go-to as long as everything turns out good with that headset. I've never tried one yet to, to play PC VR content because it's going to be native on the headset. And, you know, I, I have the... Um, the tracking, the Steam VR tracking with the Steam VR controllers and stuff like that. So that's always going to be a better experience for me, regardless of if it's tethered. But I do want to give you guys at least a little bit of what I tried on the Quest 3. It's no surprise that for everything that I talked about, uh, for the pancake lenses, a better display, all that stuff, I know we keep saying that over and over again, that this is going to be a better PC VR headset than the Quest 2. I mean, it's obvious. You got the better sound that we talked about. You got the better displays and the better lenses. So obviously, it's going to inherently be a better PC VR experience. I did try this with Virtual Desktop when they released their update now, and that's going to make the experience even better because now they support the new AV1 Kodak on here, which is going to allow for higher bit rate. Uh, so it's going to make games look that much better than what they did before if you have a Wi-Fi 6E router. So if you have a Wi-Fi 6E router, it's going to be able to take advantage of that new Kodak. And if you have a Wi-Fi 6E router, now this actually supports Wi-Fi 6E. So the wireless is going to be even better on here to get higher you know, fidelity in games and stuff like that through virtual desktop, which is going to bring that experience even higher than what you had before. So going from the quest 2 with the fact that this supports wi-fi 6e is going to be a huge improvement if you have one of those routers uh to get games to look even better and even smoother and run with less hitches when you're playing virtual desktop when i went from a quest 2 to a quest pro which also supported wi-fi 6 uh which is better than what the quest 2 did uh it was night and day difference as far as how much smoother virtual desktop ran for me when playing games so the fact that this supports 6e is just that much better than it was before and when i played virtual desktop games on here in wireless that's exactly what i got it was it was awesome to play you know with no wires and stuff like that there it's still not going to be as good as if you're playing you know tethered to a pc with an actual pc vr headset which is why i can't wait for big screen beyond and using that headset you're not going to get that there's still going to be artifacts there's still going to be you know degradation and quality and stuff like that but it's a much better experience than it was on quest 2 and a lot closer to being native on the quest 3 than it used to be before uh which is obviously great um so whoever wants to have an all-in-one headset this is going to be the best bang for your buck it's going to be much better than the quest 2 and it's going to be the best headset you could get that you can play standalone when you want to and then also get a fantastic pc vr experience the other thing i got to talk about here is social experiences i'm a really big believer that vr is all about social and it's all about playing social games and that's kind of what stands out about the Quest. Uh, going from the PlayStation VR 2, uh, I'll be making a dedicated video uh, of a PC VR, a PlayStation VR 2 versus the 
quest. But one of the big things about that is social experiences. I love going into big screen and watching movies with other people and having those social experiences, watching with 15 other people and talking to them, watching big sporting events with people, going into Horizon Worlds and just going into all these different environments and cool environments and playing with people, going into Rec Room, going into you know all the other social experiences that are out there, inviting friends into your home and showing off your home and having four people watching TV together or going into these uh, you know games together. The social experiences and the social apps that are in here really sell VR in my in my ex experience and my belief is that social VR is a big thing so I love that the Quest 3 obviously takes that ex social experience to the next level with all these better technologies and stuff that you can now see in big screen with people and talking to people and the better sound and stuff like that so the social experience on the Quest 3 is fantastic I did a dedicated video on that as well showing you what you can do with the Quest 3 and with social stuff and all that stuff will be you know linked down below so you guys can take a look at all the social experiences that are in VR nowadays but the Quest 3 really elevates that with all the better technology that it has. So I want to wrap up with a couple of different things here before I give my final thoughts. Is it better than the Quest 2? It's no contest in my opinion. Pancake lenses are already a huge difference. Then you come to the better resolution. Then you come to the uh, no screen door effect. Then you come to uh, the fact that there's no um, glare anymore or anything like that or God rays and stuff like that on this headset then you come to the better uh, speakers that are 40 percent louder and stuff like that that are built in you come to the better tracking of the controllers you come to the better haptics you come to the fact that it feels better on your head due to the economic ergonomics of the headset you come to the fact that it has a 2.5 times better gpu performance that you're going to get better looking games than you are on the quest 2 by a long shot and there we're already seeing that you come to the fact that you have ex uh, experiences like mixed reality that i think are fantastic and we're just getting started with the mixed reality stuff we've only hit the surface of what devs are going to be able to do with that here in the beginning and it's already fantastic um, with the color pastor and stuff like that and like we all know things improve the quest 2 got improvement every single month all the time with new features new features and stuff like that uh, that they've always added and we can expect the exact same thing for the quest 3 so we're literally at the starting line of what is going to happen with the quest 3 but in my opinion if we're coming from the quest 2 it's a night and day difference in almost every aspect and if you're coming from the quest 1 uh, I think it's going to blow your mind. Yes, the Quest 1 had a, a better OLED panel, so you're going to miss a little bit of the dark stuff. But for me, I'll, I'll sacrifice having better blacks for the other tens of reasons that I just gave you on why the Quest 3 will be better than the Quest 1 regardless. And when it comes to the Quest Pro, as somebody who had it, it's still better than the Quest Pro, in my opinion, uh, because yes, the Quest Pro has local dimming and better blacks because of the mini LED, but it's running the old chipset, so you're going to be left behind as more and more games get updated. Um, so, and the, uh, I'd rather choose a Quest 3 just because of the better graphics that this thing is going to have and the, the higher quality um, color pass-through that's going to make itself better for mixed reality. So if I was going to buy a Quest Pro today or a Quest 3, I would easily buy a Quest 3 and lose out on the better blacks a little bit that you get on the Quest Pro and the local dimming. But uh, yes, it has facial tracking and, and eye tracking and stuff like that, but there's so few games that are even taking advantage of that that it really doesn't matter in, in the standalone sense. Uh, when it comes to PC VR, the Quest Pro is probably a little bit more on par, uh, especially with the local dimming and stuff. You're going to get a little bit more out of it uh, than if you're just using the PC VR and not taking advantage of anything mixed reality or anything standalone, then maybe the Quest Pro is probably better in that case. Other than that, Quest 3 all the time. And when it comes to the PlayStation VR 2, I'll give you guys a snippet even though I'm making a dedicated video. In my opinion, if I had to choose one or the other right now, I would take the Quest 3 over the PlayStation VR 2. Yes, the PlayStation VR 2 has better graphics uh, than the because it's running off of PlayStation VR, but it's obviously hooked up to a PlayStation 5. But this, with the fact that I have all the social apps that I can never get on the PlayStation VR 2, uh, like big screen and uh, watching movies together with other people, uh, all these social experiences that you can have like Horizon Worlds and VR chat and stuff like that are awesome. And uh, mixed reality stuff that you can have on here is going to be, you know, an exciting experience to see how that develops later. And all the stuff that we're getting in now that you obviously don't get on the PlayStation VR 2. The fact that it's wireless, the fact that you can play PC VR if you want to on the Quest 3. I mean, like I said, I'll be doing a dedicated video. There's a lot to get into. There are some things that the PlayStation VR 2 obviously does better. And I'm going to be playing both and PlayStation VR 2 is not going anywhere. But if someone asked me today, hey, you can only buy one and you have 500 bucks, which one are you buying? Quest 3 over the PlayStation VR 2, even at this early stage in my, and for me, because of everything that I just talked about. So guys, uh, final thoughts on this thing. I think the Quest 3 is a fantastic headset, and I think whoever buys it is going to have a fantastic time with it. It's a much better improvement 
uh, by a long shot over the Quest 2 and the Quest 1, and even an improvement in some ways than the Quest Pro in the ways that I care about. And I think a lot of you guys are going to be impressed by it, and I think we're only going to keep getting impressed as more and more games get more time to develop for the Quest 3 as exclusives come out for it next year, hopefully. And, and we kind of go down that road as mixed reality gets better, as pass-through gets better with updates, and, and what, uh, you know, we haven't even talked about augments that are going to be added to mixed reality next year, where you're going to be able to decorate your room with different uh, objects and stuff like that in mixed reality, and uh, different displays on your screen and stuff like that. I mean, the sky's the limit for this thing, but we're at a really good baseline, and so far... I haven't had any issues with my Quest 3, and I'm really impressed with everything that I talked about, and I'm excited to see that this is the starting line for it, and I think a lot of you guys are going to be really impressed with it. So, guys, if you guys have any questions about anything I talked about on the Quest 3, make sure you comment those down below. I have a bunch of links down below. If you guys want to support me, if you want to purchase a Quest 3 from me from Amazon, that will help support me. If you guys want to use a link for a referral code, that will get you $30 credit when you get your Oculus Quest 3. Uh, I've done a lot of game reviews, and I have links to save you guys 25% on those games, and I'll continue to do that going forward. And I'll have all the links down to the different videos that I've done on the Quest 3 down below as well. So make sure you subscribe to see future content. There's a lot of stuff we're going to be talking about on the Quest 3. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Till next time.